Warsaw, I'm an architect. It's the only job I've ever done. And I've been working for 12 years with a small practice based on this uh, We do a lot of island jobs, remote jobs. We always work with renewables, we don't touch all of us, for example, and we try and use local materials as much as possible. It should all be second nature to work with. About four years ago, uh, I got a phone call from a man called Fred Taylor, and he said, I've been watching you, <laughs> and now I'm ready. Fred was very involved uh, and he watched me redesign it and he sort of stood back, his father was an architect and so he's interested in the process and he was a lovely client because he said what he didn't like. He can't live there now but he has every intention to live he knows every rock, he knows his life. And he was cooking outside and he was living outside really. So we had a good day, the three of us, looking for water. So the first thing any we need for life is water. So the other thing is there was no energy, so we, we had to look at a renewable system. So that has to go in very early on in the planning stage. I have to say I kept redesigning, redesigning, but came back to this idea of living outside. In this so, the go so it's, it emerged, there's this, there is a seal subplane. The idea was that we'd have point loads and it would sit the building lightly on the landscape. I had the great, uh, this idea that the landscape went under it, which is quite unusual for us. Work we do, we tend to do ground bearing buildings, which are to do with the traditional architecture. But this one was to float. There is a sub base of steel, but then, it, then beyond that, it's all dry construction. It's clad in larch, it's lined in birch face ply, it's got a large form, it's got some great dust. It's a very restrained in material terms, it's just about inside and out. If there's not a door to the outside, there's a big sheet of glass. In it. The sense is that he's still living outside, but I have to say it's pretty. Me, it's very lovely moment, and to hand it's, it's never my building, but you hand it over, and it's, they are taking possession of it in their way. And it's chaotic. It's not like the drawings, of course, because architects draw how people live. It's shocking, but uh, I'm really thrilled to see them there, and they love it, and they're going to be there. The, the problem with what's happening, I think what's happening with the RHIs and the feeding tariffs is that people who have land and who have money and have the capital to do it make the money. And it, that's not that different from the 19th century when, you know, that's still people who have, have and get more. My personal view, and we've done it a few times, is we've got to deal with the existing houses. And if we spent the equivalent money on insulation, sorting out, then we'd deal directly with the fuel poverty, which is a big problem. That's leaky houses with oil tanks and that's a serious serious problem people are really cold in winter about egg is that people have learned to read think about energy for themselves and take responsibility for all the technology there's lots of stuff out there that people and there there are is public money for all sorts of things but what i found interesting about egg and with some of my clients is how they learn to be aware of their energy consumption on a very personal basis I've done two buildings where we've wrapped old buildings in insulation. I'd love to go around and look at wrap. It's, it's a very straightforward technology and you make these stone and concrete buildings, you give them a thermal mass and that kind of works. So my house, for example, has storm shutters, which I love. Because it, and it's mostly in the summer, it's sun and wood. I mean, wood in the spring and autumn and sun. These are the basic things, you know. With the public building programs like the any healthcare or school building programs, we don't have a chance. As local architects, we don't have a chance. We're far too small. Uh, the local contractors, more importantly, don't have a chance. So all that uh, income for joiners and clients is not there. It's all off island. So the, it, there's no joined up thinking, and that's down to procurement. And this this same problem where they think cheap is best is unsustainable. You've got to spend money on fabric to make buildings sustainable and that, that shift in uh, attitude to buildings has to be. Buildings should last.